Hey, Ginger here. Thanks for coming in for another episode of Art That Place and Praise. I'm doing a product comparison today and I'm focusing on colored pencils. But before I go any further, let me make this crystal clear. All of the products you'll see in this video were not sponsored. I'm not an affiliate of any of these companies. I bought these colored pencil sets myself. That said, all the reviews and points I'll share are entirely my own. They're all unbiased trade talk, okay? So in this product review, we'll take a closer look at the most popular brands. Prismacolor Premier, which is manufactured in Mexico, Faber-Castell Polychromos, which is a product of Germany, and Swiss-made Caran d'Ache Luminans, which many artists consider the Rolls Royce of colored pencils. Is there any basis in saying that? Uh, let's find out. Before I tackle the differences between these three brands, let me put it out there that all of these are permanent colored pencils. They are not water soluble. They all come pre-sharpened. All three, three brands are artist grade as opposed to student grade, which means that professionals can use them. All three brands boast of superior light fastness, high saturation, and blending ability. But to what degree are they superior? That's what I want to dissect in this video. Because obviously there are varying levels of performance for each of these, and that's what you want to explore further. Now let's tackle first Prismacolor, which most of you might already be familiar with since this is the go-to medium of most adult coloring book enthusiasts. Premier is the artist grade line of Prismacolor, they also have another student grade product which is the Prismacolor's Color, but that's not what I'll review here. Prismacolor's largest set comes with 150 colors which is what I have here. They do have smaller sets. There's a 24 pack, a 48, 72, and 132 pencil set which are packaged in better looking metal tin containers, not like this carton here. It's a shame that this 150 set doesn't come in a tin as well. This box has a magnetic closure, but it's not secure enough. If you drop the box, I'm sure the pencils will scatter everywhere. Now, first impressions. The moment I opened the box, I, I got giddy with excitement. Look at all these colors. It really takes your breath away, right? Oh my gosh, isn't this so pretty? The color range is astounding. You get so many shades of red, so many shades of blue and green, and the white selection opens up so many possibilities. Just think about all the variations of colors you can achieve and blending them together. But that's just my initial reaction. Upon closer inspection, my disappointment trickled in one by one. Prismacolor has developed a bad reputation ever since it moved its manufacturing from the US to Mexico. So if you have an old set, and by, by old I mean you bought it any time prior to 2010, then the problems I'll detail here may not concern you, but it appears that quality control issues erupted with the newer colored pencils that shipped out of Mexico. The most obvious flaws are the cracks. Some cracks are airline thin and not too noticeable, but some are some some are more serious and the barrels are split in half. It's not just the superficial paint that's shipped. There are fissures on the wood and those are serious structural problems. You you don't want to deal with that. Now check these out. These cracks are clear indications to me that the quality of the wood they use could be substandard. We wouldn't know for sure because the wood is covered up with paint. If there were inherent imperfections on the cedar, uh, there's no way for us to find out until we experience problems while coloring or sharpening. And that's exactly what many artists have experienced with Prismacolor. You just need to read reviews on Amazon to know the many horror stories about Premiere. I made the careless mistake of knocking over my Prismacolor box halfway through filming and this is what I got! Clutter! <laughs> but because of that accident, I realized two things. 
One is that these trays are so flimsy they can't properly hold the weight of the pencils, especially if you're carrying the tray with one hand. The thin plastic folds up too easily. It's easy to dislodge the pencils because the individual grooves are not deep either. They, they don't hug the pencils as pencils, uh, snugly as a Caran Dash case does. Discovery number two is that the leads are so soft that they can get damaged as the slightest drop. Look closely at the tips of these pre-sharpened pencils. None of these were used yet. These are brand new, but they're chipped off now. Can you see that? These types of accidental breakages don't happen with polychromos and luminance. Another design flaw that might not be too obvious for you is the off-center cores. Most people don't care if the leads are centered or not, but this will become problematic the moment you start sharpening the pencils. I'll show you that later. I'll sharpen these colored pencils and show you what I mean. But for now, check out these off-center uh, leads. From the bottom, you can view that some of the leads are leaning towards one edge. I'm putting these flawed pencils side by side with a perfectly centered um, pencil so you can see the difference, right? Prismacolor has been in the business of creating pencils since 1938. You would think that by now they've perfected the design and manufacturing process of these products. But sadly, they've cut corners in their production to bring down the cost. And of all the brands in my review here, Prisma is in fact the cheapest. That's probably why it's cornered a comparatively larger share of the market. People can afford it, plain and simple. It's within their budget to grab a Prisma than a Caran d'Ache set. However, I, I know of many serious professionals who regret trading quality for price. My 150-pack Prisma here is brand spanking new, but you saw all the flaws from the pencils I just randomly picked. I even got doubles of the same green color! Yikes! Two lime peels! Well, green is my favorite color, so I don't mind getting two of those, but I wonder what color did I miss then? It's Kinda of counterproductive for me to sift through an online color chart just to figure out that single color I don't have in this set. I don't think I'd want to go through all that trouble for one missing colored pencil, so never mind. Let's now talk about Caran d'Ache Luminance. Caran d'Ache is a trustworthy brand. I've used their new color crayons for years and I have no complaints about them. It's a lovely medium which I also reviewed in this channel. If you want to check that out, the video link is in the description box below. But what about Luminance? Is it any good as well? Karen Dash's commitment to quality is so visible even through the packaging. This may not be a metal tin case, but this box is pretty hefty. It's not flimsy at all. It's a hard carton lined with black foam everywhere even the inside cover has black foam what i love about this is the deep foam indentations in every tray which houses the individual pencils the pencils sit really snugly and securely in this case so you can bring the set with you when you travel and not worry about pencils shaking up all over the place inside the box the first thing I noticed when I opened the box is that the selection of colors is not that exhaustive. Obviously, because the largest set of Luminance only has 76 colors, but even with this 76 color set, the shades are not that bright and there are not enough representations from the color wheel. There are more muted tones here, which is perfect if you're, n if you're into portraits. There are tons of skin tones, which I believe are difficult to find in many other sets. But if you notice, the reds, blues, greens, and yellows are limited. The selection is not that expansive, and there's a good reason for it. It's because Caran d'Ache values light fastness, and many pigments, especially the reds, purples, blues, and yellows, they have inherently poor light fastness. 
Being a professional grade set, Luminance boasts of the highest light fast ratings among all colored pencils. They even put up a seal on the box cover to attest to that superiority and quality. Imagine 61 of the 76 colors have the highest light fast rating of 1 based on ASTM standards. Now, ASTM st uh, stood for uh, the American Society for Testing and Materials, which I, mu my, I must add is a bit of a misnomer because ASTM is not solely American. It's an organization representing some 120 countries worldwide, and many of their members don't even live in the United States. But anyway, this seal is pretty important because it warrants the reliability of Karen Dash's products. Now, if you're vaguely familiar with the concept of light fastness, let me explain it to you in layman's English. Light fast ratings were created to give consumers an indication of how fast or slow your artwork will fade over time under moderate exposure to sunlight. You see, sunlight has ultraviolet radiation and since light and heat are forms of energy these have the ability to cause chemical reactions in pigments uv rays can break down the chemical bonds of dyes and pigments and cause what is called photo degradation or what you and i commonly just call fading your art can get bleached and turn white just by leaving it outdoors a pigment that's able to resist this photo degradation is considered light fast. Now, regardless of what medium you use, whether they're acrylic, watercolors, oil pastels, oils, colored pencils, or whatnot, artists need to know how the pigments were rated to determine if their work will last for less than two years, for decades, or for century. This ranking is important, especially if you're selling your paintings and you value your name and reputation to your clients. Now, each pigment has its own measure of longevity since each pigment has its own chemistry and reaction to sunlight. Now, friends, there's one important caveat I must add. You have to take these light fastness ratings with a grain of salt. Even if you see in the packaging that your colored pencils have an excellent light fast rating, don't just think everything is fine and dandy. Because here's the thing, these classifications were based on the assumption that the paintings are properly mounted and displayed under controlled and reduced lighting such as what you find in galleries and museums. But our homes are not lit dimly like museums, right? And here's another thing. Exposure to light radiation can, de can vary depending on your geographic location. So do you live in Florida or in a tropical region where, where heat is more intense throughout the year? Or do you live in a country where it's perpetually cold? Is your painting directly exposed to the sun through a south-facing window? Or is it away from a window and exposed only to weaker indoor lighting a few hours a day? Those factors matter and can have a huge impact in altering the speed of fading or discoloration of your paints. So although the ASTM and blue wool tests give light fastness standards of reliability for the pigments they subject to testing, you can't put your entire faith in it. Those classifications are relative to normal conditions of exposure. You can't just blindly believe that since one color is rated in the box to last 100 years, that it won't fade in 25 years or less. Because the truth is, a pigment with an ASTM or blue wool light fast rating of excellent may not last 100 years as the chart says if you put your painting under direct sunlight during summer it can only last three to four months before it fades if you expose your art to direct sunlight during winter your painting can last seven to nine months i'm not making that up you know that that's what studies have shown and so my point is even when these brands claim to have superior light fastness that's just a guideline. 
you you still need to be smart and prudent by protecting your work by probably applying the proper protective varnishes or by keeping them away from bright windows. Now, why did I get into that long discussion on light fastness? It's because that is the main selling point of Caran Dash Luminance. It it has the best light fastness among all the brands of colored pencils, not just the ones that I have in this product review. And for us serious professionals, it's a feature that can swing our votes away from Prismacolor. Because the fact is, Prismacolor has the worst light fastness. I studied their chart for the 132 piece set, and of the 132 colored pencils, 34 are classified as fair and poor. That's 26%! More than one fourth of the whole box are useless pencils that will fade in two years or less. Of the 132 pencils, only 53 have excellent light fastness. That's only 40%. Pretty low, right? And these light fast pencils are mostly grays. It also includes the black, the white, and the colorless blender. In other words, all the bright, vibrant colors that made me drool when I first opened the set are in fact susceptible to discoloration. Pretty bad news, huh? Anyway, back to Luminance and do I love, what do I love about Karen Dash anyway? I love that the pencil casings are not painted and you can see the quality of the California cedar wood they used. They're not hiding their raw materials under layers of paint covering, so you can actually see the wood grain, the solidity of the cedar. You can see that there are no cracks, knots, or natural fissures in the casing that can be points of breakage for the pencil. That to me is plain honesty from the manufacturer, and I appreciate that. It's enough for me that the tip has the color swatch. I don't need for the pencil to be covered in paint from end to end. And talking of swatches, the paint colors on the bottom end of these pencils are accurate representations of the pigments on the lead. They match pretty well. That to me is super helpful because then I don't need to waste precious leads to scratch out a swatch for this set. The color code you see on the casing is more or less the same color you get on paper when you use this product, so that's all perfect. What I don't like about the Luminance is the labeling. The color labels have tiny, shiny silver fonts wrapped around the tip which are hard to read. Unlike Polychromos and Prismacolor Premier where the, the labels run along the length of the pencils, this one goes on the tip and you need to swirl the uh, twirl the pencil 360 degrees to read the words. It's a chore to read and the choice of font color is not great as well because there's not much contrast between the metallic silver labels and the natural light brown color of the cedar wood. If the labels were in black, that would have been a bit easier to read. Luminance pencils are sold individually, which is awesome. If you run out of a particular color, you can order that separately without having to invest in another 76 color set. And that's the reason why each pencil has a barcode here. Isn't that cool? What about Faber-Castell Polychromos? Of the three brands in this review, I find that the labels on the Polychromos are the easiest to read. The fonts are big enough and are spread across the length of the barrel. Polychromos colored pencils are the only oil-based ones in this review and because of that, their cores are harder and more resistant to breakage. But at the same time, they're harder to blend and burnish compared to Prismacolor Premier. They are not as creamy and some artists use solvents to spread the pigments around but I find that too bothersome. One big advantage of oil-based pencils is that they're not prone to wax bloom. Wax bloom is a form of oxidation, pretty much like the rust you find in metal. It happens when you use materials that are wax heavy. When you've layered way too much colors one on top of the other, then wait a few days later, some of the wax binders lift to the surface of your art you'll notice a whitish film on top of your painting and that's what you call wax bloom. It creates some splotchy haze on your painting and they can be unsightly. 
You can easily get around this problem by spraying a final fixative on your work immediately after you're done. Or you can use a workable fixative if you think you still need to go back to your painting and add a few more alterations later. That said, with polychromos being an oil-based medium, wax bloom will not be a concern. So that's one plus factor in choosing polychromos. Now all polychromos colored pencils are packaged nicely in tins whether there are only 12 pieces or 120 pieces which is what I'm featuring in this review. Polychromos are more expensive than Prismacolor Premier but luckily they have smaller versions you can buy if you budget this an issue. Besides the 12 pack there are 24 piece sets, 36 and 60 piece sets. Another excellent thing about polychromos is their light fastness. If you can't afford the luminance, polychromos is your next bet for a fade resistant medium. For a manufacturer that has uh, that has been in the business since 1761, Faber Castell understands quality and has survived for centuries as proof of it. Let's head over and compare the performance of these three products. All three brands have the same core diameter. The cores are all 3.8 millimeters, but the wooden barrels have different thicknesses. You can feel the difference in the way the pencils sit on your hands. Karen Dash Luminance feels heavy, not in a tiring bad way, but in a nice and cozy perfect way. The overall diameter of the pencil is substantial, so it doesn't feel like it will slide off your hands while you're working. Polychromos is slightly thinner, but the luminance, um, it, it still feels comfortable in the hand. Prismacolor, on the other hand, is too thin for me. I don't like how this feels. There's not enough weight to it, so it feels like I'll drop this if I don't grip it too well. I want to experiment here. What if you made a mistake in coloring and you went outside the lines of your adult coloring book? Can you erase what you did? Let's test how well we can erase lines here. As you can see, no amount of rubbing can fully clear up the lines made with Prismacolor Premier. That's because the formulation of the Premier wasn't intended for erasing. The fact is, the more wax content there is in the pigments, the more difficult it, it will be for you to undo your mistakes. Wax binds strongly to the paper and since Polychromos is oil-based. It's the easiest to erase. It's almost invisible after you just a few eraser rubbings. You can see it here. You've seen me build this comparative swatch at the beginning of this video. Now let me explain what I think about it. In terms of the opacity of white against a black sheet of mixed media paper, I think hands down, Prismacolor is the most vibrant it retains its whiteness and doesn't look gray like polychromos. Karen Dash Luminance isn't bad either, but applying too much pressure and the lead causes some flakiness for Karen Dash. Polychromos didn't have the brightness of Prisma, but the laydown was smooth and the coverage was complete, unlike that of Prisma Color, which came out splotchy when I colored with a light hand. When I mixed white with the moss green, the buttery softness of Prismacolor made the blending so much easier. Blending with Polychromos was more difficult but not impossible as long as you press down hard on the paper. The same is true when I mixed the red and yellow to make orange. Prismacolor is a joy to use. Karen Dash feels the same way. It's also very smooth and easy on the hands. What I love about Luminance is that even as I blend, the vibrancy of the undercoat still shows through. With the moss green and white for instance, the green still stays sharp even when I topped it with white. Compare that with Prisma, the moss green was toned down to a pastel shade when I topped it with white. Well, well that's fine if that's the effect you're going for. but. If you want to keep the saturation level of the moss green a bit more consistent and bright, if you don't want to lose the tone and use of the undercoats even after burnishing, then for me, Luminance and Polychromos are the clear winners. 
Here at the bottom of the chart, I want to test how opaque black is. As you can see, all the blacks across all the brands are, they are really dark, even on top of the red. None of the red streaks showed up. That just tells me that I should go easy when blending black with any colors because the other pigment will obviously be eaten up. Now I'm blending white on top of the red using circular motions. I wanted to test if I can minimize the streakiness of the pigments. In the previous swatches, I used a side-to-side -side motion when coloring and because of that, the blended colors produce horizontal lines, as you already saw. But what if I don't want to see those stripes in my painting? Will coloring in circles do the trick? And from the results, you can see that both Prismacolor and Luminance performed well. The mixture is smooth and doesn't show hard edges at all. The gradients, I mean the transitions, are seamless. But oil-based polychromos still reveals the horizontal lines of the red underpainting, even when I topped it with white using circular strokes. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I'll talk about sharpening. The most common complaints with Prisma is the sharpening, and it's really tricky to do because you end up breaking the soft core, and repeated sharpening just shortens the life of the, your pencils. In the long run, a set of Prisma turns out to be more expensive than a Polychromos or Luminance set because you end up buying more often to replenish your supplies. Now there's a trick I learned through years of experimentation. See how I'm doing this? When sharpening, I keep the pencil immobile. It's the sharpener, not the pencil, that rotates. And I never use an electric sharpener. Of the dozens of sharpeners I've tried, even electric ones, this one here was the most effective for me. It's the cheapest yet the most friendly tool for my color pencils. You can try this. Now check these out. As you can see, all of the brands can produce a sharp point, which will be perfect for all the fine details of your art. But a word of warning though, Although I managed to sharpen the Prismacolor pencils to a needle point sharpness, this is not bound to last very long. As you've already seen, it doesn't take much pressure for the tip of the Prisma to flatten. The wax core is that soft. And look at the impact of sharpening once. See how short the Prismacolor pencil became compared to the original pencil? And that was only after sharpening once. Compare that with Polychromos, which more or less still has the same length as the original pencil after sharpening. Earlier, I mentioned the problem of off-center cores. Take a look at these sharpened pencils. See what happened with the Prisma? On one side of the pencil tip, you'll notice that there's more wood than lead. As I twirl this pencil, you can see that on the opposite side, there's more lead than... Uh, the wood. With off-center cores, you run the risk of getting more wood on the tip instead of pigments, and that's problematic because how can you color with wood? Okay, I think I've covered a huge ground in this comparative review. I've presented both the good and the bad of each pencil brand. It's up to you now to pick your favorites. But if you ask me if I may recommend, my choice is still Caran d'Ache Luminance. Even if it is the most expensive and has the least number of colors in the largest set, it still has the best quality overall. But that's just me, okay? Let me not influence your decision. Um, I think that for whatever colors I may lack in, in the Caran d'Ache, I can just supplement it with Polychromos. Or, if budget is an issue, I just keep blending together the colors in the set and make the most of what I already have. Alright, thanks friends for watching this episode of Art That Plays and Praise. I hope you learned a lot. Please subscribe and help make this channel thrive. I rely entirely on your love and support. Until next time, God bless you.